less stress, more time, more money. Welcome to the Cash Flow Contractor, short with Martin Holland. Thanks for listening to The Cash Flow Contractor. Check out our website in the show notes or visit thecashflowcontractor.com. When you know they need to go. Hi, this is Martin and welcome to this short episode of The Cash Flow Contractor in which I'm going to talk about firing people. This subject has come up a number of times in recent weeks, and I thought it was worth doing a short episode on. I think anybody who's been in a position, a management position, really does not like the idea of having to fire somebody. Perhaps there are people out there who do, and I know some people who say they do, but they don't really. Uh, Firing is, is a difficult task, almost always, but sometimes it's not. I remember in a job probably 30 years ago, I was the manager of a grain elevator and I sold one of our pickup trucks to a young guy who worked for us. And some, oh, a month after I sold it to him, the guy who ran the local gas station came over with a pile of tickets. And he said, "Uh, did you sell that truck to Tommy? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, he's been charging gas down at the station, charging it to the company. So I called Tommy in. I asked him if that was true. And he allowed that it was. I could see the color drain from his face when he saw the station guy in my my office with a pile of tickets. And uh, anyway, he admitted to it, and I fired him immediately. And that was about as easy as it gets. I had all the information I needed. There was no doubt that he'd stolen from the company, and he admitted it. Firing just doesn't get any easier than that. The problem is it's usually not that easy. Even even Warren Buffett, the hard-nosed billionaire investor, dreads firing people, and he said in, in a place I read, it's pure agony. I usually postpone it. I suck my thumb. I do all kinds of other things before I finally carry it out. But why why is it so difficult? I think the first reason is empathy. Few of us relish the idea of telling people they don't measure up or of sending them and their families to the uncertain world of the unemployed We put ourselves in their positions and we imagine their self-doubt and difficulties that lie ahead of them, and it's especially tough if they're nice. So empathy is one reason. I think another reason is doubt. We've all heard the saying, hire for skill and fire for attitude. Skills are objective and can be measured. That's why most of us base our hiring decisions on skills. The objective measurements that make hiring easy for skill, or hiring for skill easy, also make it easier, or at least easier, to fire for the lack of skill. We have the comfort of objective data to offset our doubt. They can either do it or they can't do it. When they can't do it, we have something to point to and say, that's why we're letting you go. It's a different story for attitude. Attitude is subjective. Uh, It's always kind of tough to bring in somebody and say, well, I'm letting you go because of your bad attitude. You might understand what that means. They might understand what that means. Everybody who works with them might understand what that means. But if they're in a position to dispute or they've always got something to argue because attitude is subjective and that introduces doubt into the decision. A third reason, and I hear this all the time, is fairness. I've I've had countless conversations with business owners who knew they had to fire somebody, but they're struggling with doing it. And most would bring up questions or question whether or not they'd been fair or done enough training or giving her enough time or giving her a chance. Those, usual, those questions are usually followed by comments such as, he's really a good person, but he can't get his paperwork done, or she does this really well, but that's not what I hired her for, or he's good at this job, but his coworkers can't stand to be around him, but, 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 and more delay. So those are our three reasons. Uh, Some of you might be out there grinning and thinking, that's not me, but the large majority of the people that I work with, the managers and owners that I work with, 
do have problems with empathy, doubt, and fairness when it comes to firing something, somebody. So what, what can you do? Well, you can, you can ask the right questions, at least of yourself. I could have blamed myself for not telling the guys at the gas station that I'd sold the truck to Tommy. I should have told them, but I didn't. However, it was Tommy's choice to steal gas that cost him his job. It was not my failure to remove temptation. No regrets. Instead of questioning whether or not you've been fair or provided enough training, try asking yourself, has this person ever approached me seeking help? Has he put forth an effort to learn? Do I see this person as a highly valued member of my team one year from today? If your answer is to no, then you know. They have to go. You, you can see now why my firing Tommy was so easy. I didn't have any questions of empathy, empathy, doubt, or fairness. The decision was just clear and easy and so just that I almost enjoyed it. We may never eliminate all the feelings of empathy, doubt, and fairness, but we cannot let them keep us from terminating an employee once we know he or she has to go. Our futures depend on that. Building the right team is arguably the most important duty, uh, our most important duty as leaders of our businesses. Teams in large part determine our futures, not only our futures, but the futures of the other people who work for you. They transform your job into a business. They're the difference between you having a job and you having a business. They provide leverage to do more and earn more than we ever could without them. They provide you the leverage to do that. Teams represent us. They represent our values, and they represent our businesses to our customers and the public. They set us free to work on our businesses while they work in the businesses. Team members who don't meet our standards put all of that in jeopardy. We simply cannot afford to settle for substandard team members just because we are uncomfortable firing them. We cannot afford to give them 90 more days because that sets us back 90 days in our search for the right hire and it sets them back 90 days in their search for the right job. Somebody said, I, I think I've heard it many times, but everybody has a place in the world. Sometimes they're not, their place is not with us. Firing people may never be easy, but the resolve to do it comes from setting standards for an ideal team member and then pursuing those standards relentlessly. Just imagine a team of people who take initiative and ownership Imagine a team of people who are engaged and pleasant to be around and who show up on time and meet deadlines and do a little extra and tell you about problems after they've already solved them and who are supportive of one another and care about their customers. Imagine a team that shares your values and fits your culture. If that's the standard, why settle for less? Below are the few types of standards that you can use, a few types of standards that you can use to make your decisions easier. You know that your employees have to go. You know an employee has to go. When they constantly display blame, excuse, denial type behavior. When they never do anything extra. When they repeatedly say, it's not my job. When they gossip and spread dis dissension. When they're not engaged. When they never take initiative. They're unpredictable and unreliable. You're not sure if they're going to show up today or not. You're not sure if they're going to complete that job or not. You're not sure whether they're going to make that customer mad or not. When they don't share our values, when they don't respect their, their teammates, when they chronically miss deadlines, when they don't work to improve themselves, when they respond defensively to constructive criticism, when they're defiant, when they overstep the boundaries, or, or when they steal gas or anything else. You can use your judgment, values, and experience to add to that list, but write it down and trust yourself. Don't waffle. Firing an employee is no waffling. Empathy, doubt, fairness will always be issues, but you, you can reduce their impact on your decisions by defining your standards in writing, as I just listed above. Standards that make the firing decisions easier because they make them less subjective. It's not just how you feel about it. You have something to point to and say, hey, they are defensive. They are defiant. They do overstep boundaries. You get more objective and less subjective. They also, your standards also improve your hiring decisions in the, in the first place because you know clearly and in advance what subjective traits you're looking for. 
understand that great teams are gathered. They're not made. We can teach skills, but we can't necessarily teach the attitudes and the values that make great team members. Be aware that people are watching us. One of the great quotes I heard recently was that there's no faster way to ruin a good employee than to have him or her watch you tolerate a bad employee. Your decision to fire <clears throat> affects more than just you and the employee. Your team, your customers, your families, and the public are all watching. And what they see is our actions. The real company of values, according to Reed Hastings, I'm reading, uh, as CEO of Netflix said the real company values as opposed to the nice sounding values are shown by who gets rewarded, promoted, or let go. Fire fast. Once you know they have to go, do it and move on. That goes back to that 90 days. You're postponing by 90 days. You're finding the right person and you're delaying by 90 days. They're finding the right job. Uh, understand that you need to, when you know they need to go, it's very likely they know too. Set them free to purchase, pursue the right course for them. You can be perpetually looking for the right people. We often accept less than the best because we're uncertain where the replacement will come from. You're going to tolerate somebody because you have no idea who's going to take their place and you're going to be in a bind. So constantly be on the lookout for good people. Never settle. We should not keep someone around because we feel guilty or sorry for them. If they're truly in a tough spot, we can even give them some money, although HR people will generally disagree with that. But we can give them some money along with the freedom to find the right job. And then once you've done it, never regret or second guess your decision. When it's done, it's done. So I think one of the most important things that we can do as business owners is define and imagine the type of team we want, then go out and create that. Create that by eliminating the wrong people and by acquiring the new people. When you know they need to go, do it.